Well, from the white rose. So you don't want to do more than words. I don't. I'm going to make some notes on that because I thought we were going to do that. Uh, Emerald Rocks, we are back somewhat, giving it a shot this week. Uh, we've got our lovely and talented local uh, rock and roll hero, Mr. Brandon Landelius. Cheers. That's right. You Cheers. heard me correct. That was sweet of you. That was sweet of me. Thank you. G and T on Sunday afternoon. So you know, some of you guys have been messaging us and wondering when we get the show back off the ground. And uh, to which I replied, I don't know, COVID, COVID. Anyway, COVID. So we're uh, making an attempt to try to restore life back as normal as we possibly can. Uh, we're going to be having uh, new artists every week. All local, all genres. Uh, we've got some new features coming up. We've got a, um, you can think of a name for us. We're uh, going to be doing a weekly music review with Mr. Kane Whitaker. Sorry to put you on the spot, Kane, but yes, we did talk about this. Uh, he's going to be uh, doing hip hop reviews of all genres of music with a heavy stress on uh, Red Dirt Country. So we'll see how that goes. Sounds intriguing. Anyway, no about all that. This week, Mr. Lindellius is going to give us some insight, a little bit of background. Tell me. I don't know. Perhaps. Tell me. Yes. What have you been up to? COVID. COVID. Yeah. So you've got a regular dick job when you're not touring the world. and. Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, High Plains Food Bank. Do we want to talk about that? I can cut all this out. The High Plains Food Bank? Yeah. Uh, I work at the High Plains Food Bank. Um, but yeah. Touring is not happening. Yeah. Um, and you've done a few shows with Authority Zero. I have. Yes, my friends. Uh, I was in a band for a while. 2011. Was it? Yeah. Early 2011 to the end of 2015. Um, played with those cats. Uh, and this year, I've been lucky enough to go out there and do a couple of live stream shows with those guys and uh, that was a lot of fun and it, it helped scratch that itch of yeah. not being able to play. It was in uh, Arizona? Arizona, yes. So uh, you've been in bands like uh, Mag7, I have. 40 Zero. Yes. Short oh. list. And then the big one, <laughs> the big one is A Vulture Wake. A Vulture Wake is, is, is my band now and we haven't been able to do much this year anything this year haven't done anything this year no damn i don't believe we have no we haven't it's a bummer um that's all your original content all of uh yes so who's, who's in that band uh, i mean i know but you guys don't know so tell us Walter wake uh mr chad price from all Dragon River um, also does solo work. Um, the band started with Sean Sellers from mm -hmm. Good Riddance um, and Joe Raposo from RKL and Wide Wagon. Um, those two, obviously, because they're in very large, successful bands, um, have a limited schedule. And right. so now Chad and I have uh, John Hernandez and Dave Klein. Who were in a band called Wretch Like Me. If you look them up, there is a contemporary Christian group called Wretch Like Me that is not the band they were in. <laughs> so, yeah. Shout out to uh, John Hernandez. He's uh, he's on our Facebook friends list. John Hernandez. So is Chad. Shout out to Chad. Little known fact John Hernandez gets the cops called on us when we rehearse here. Yes. Uh, John Hernandez, the single loudest drummer I've ever played personally encountered in my life it was uh, uh where they were rehearsing i had to have a police scanner going on in the front of the house and so when i heard my address I had to have them cut for a little bit and then breaks. play dumb when the cops showed up yeah. here that is a real thing uh here at rmf studios we don't have everything quite soundproof the way it's supposed to be to prevent my dickhead neighbor from uh, uh banging on the walls and are revolting at the noise. You've done a really good job. Shout out to my dickhead neighbor if he's watching this, but I doubt he is. It's soundproof, it's just not John proof. It's not John, well, there's, that's, okay, that's fair. I think. 
frighteningly loud. Like when he brought all that stuff in, he doesn't use a resonator head. He's like open. He's got that little short, that little narrow banded head. Yes. I think so. And that thing. Yes. Every single kick was cannon fire. It, it really is that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're. Um, what was the name of the first album? Uh, I'm just some brain farting here. Or Vulture. Uh, the appropriate level of appropriate outrage. Appropriate level of outrage, yes. yes. That came out, what, 2018? 2017? Recorded in 2017, released in 2018. 2018. Yes. That was uh, on the previous Bird Attack Records. Bird Attack Records put that out and also put out the EP, uh, Fall Prey EP, mm-hmm. that was released later in 2018, I believe. It was October. That stuff can be found on SoundCloud? Or uh, SoundCloud, Jesus. Spotify. Uh, Spotify. Apple Music, wherever. Amazon, streaming Tidal, you think you guys some Tidal? Yeah, I think there's probably a guy in a parking lot that sells a bootleg like yeah. copies. What was the one with the logo and the, was it real player? One with the blue logo. Was it real audio? I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Oh, how go. They probably signed an office in LA somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah. Paying $4,000 a month. And... Yeah, and there's probably just enough people out there Supporting them, mm. whatever. Winamp, remember Winamp? I do. I still have Winamp there on one of my computers. It's pretty nice. Wow. That's pretty good. Sounds so, killer. Yeah. <laughs> it's killer. All right. Yeah. So, Vulture, yeah. So, uh, barring that, I mean, are you guys planning anything for 2021? Or? Uh, writing a lot of new music. I've uh, been bouncing ideas to the guys. Um, I've been chatting to listen. He's got something, you know, for vocals. He'll record that, send that back so that we can have, you know, a little, a little bit more of an idea of what we need to do and change for arrangements and, and, you know, maybe pull back on some of the parts and give it a little more space or figure right. out where we need to fill more space or whatever. How does your writing, because I know you write a lot of riffs. Do you arrange the entire song? Do you- Shoot them riffs. You guys pitch no. vocals. You write around that. I mean, how does it, how does it work? Uh, it de- it really depends on the idea. Some sometimes it will just be an idea that's uh, a couple of parts, and I'll just I'll arrange it in a way that I I feel like would be easy to write to. Mm-hmm. Um, some things I'll send. I'll have arrangements in mind where I'll like here's this 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 this. You know, it'll all be laid out. You know, intro, verse. You know, half pre-chorus and then, you know, back to birth, whatever. Um, but for the most part, I just try to make it as easy to uh, to write to and, and follow as possible, mm-hmm. and then we can tweak it after the fact once we know what the vocal line is going to be and, you know, a spacing for breath and stuff like that. We can start playing with little little things here and there. You start off with the drums, you start off with the guitar, I mean, how do you... It just depends on it depends whatever on the idea. Sometimes it's a bass part, sometimes it's drums, sometimes it's a guitar part. It's uh, not everybody cooks their spaghetti the same. Some people boil the noodles first, so they will start with the meat. Yeah, so, you know. this is very true. Yeah. yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah, so, I'm all. He does not start place. with the meat. Like no. I just, uh, ever. That's a, that's a bad metaphor. We'll leave it out. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so the, the things you've done with the Zero, so tell me about, uh, you were with that band and you got out of it and they got another guitar player and then you got married to the lovely and talented uh, Ruthie Malandelius. I did. Uh, the prognosticator of Black Fig Catering, former Thud Stick player for Loudmouth Lisa, uh, number three, uh, overall excellent human being. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Did that for a while. You're still married, I guess. Everything's cool there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Rufus. I, w- I was when I left the house. Yeah. <laughs> so something has changed. What do they call you? Not dad? Uh, I've, I've, I am not dad. Not dad. Okay. Yes. Yes. I am, I am not dad to three, three stepchildren. <laughs> so we have a little jokes about that. Yeah. That's pretty fun. It's all in good fun. Yeah. 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 Zero was 2011 to 2000. 15. Uh, did a record with them called The Tipping Point. 
And then we also did Less Rhythm, More Booze, which is an acoustic album. Um, just kind of reworked, you know, songs from studio albums. And, and, you know, the whole premise behind that is they did the first one uh, and they just got shit faced. And they, you know, that would, they would get, you know, they would get ripped, get tuned up, and they would come up with acoustic versions of these songs. So they did the first one with the original lineup, and then when I was in the band, uh, we did a second one, and um, then a full length album, and then a lot of touring. Air go title, Less, Less Rhythm, More Booze? Yes. And rhythm and Booze. Okay. And so what, those guys are still doing their thing now, I guess. Oh, absolutely, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're working on a new record right now. So cool. yeah. who's, uh, who's playing guitar for them? Uh, they are, well, I did stuff this summer. Um, their guitar player, Dan, was taking the year off to mm-hmm. focus on his acting career. Right, right, right. So um, I don't really know what's going on in that camp mm-hmm. as far as all that goes. But I know that everybody writes. So Mike writes, Jason writes, you know, Dally comes up with ideas and stuff like that. As a drummer, it's like he, he'll hum parts out and be like, yeah, I got this. Um, so they're all, they all come up with ideas wow. and, and contribute there. So um, shout out to Dally. Yeah. Been seeing you all, brother. Love you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, those are they're, they're, those guys are family. They're all great dudes. So let's see. Uh, the real meat and potatoes. What I wanted to talk about is Mag Seven. Okay. Now Mag Seven, as some of you may or may not know, is a. Uh, Call you guys a surf punk, surf jazz noir. Uh, Black Feathers is also. Uh, it's all over the place. Well, Cotton Needle. Cotton Needle is is the jazz noir. Yeah. We forgot about Cotton Needle. Yeah, that's a different that's a different thing. Yeah. Uh, no releases for that. Just a couple of you know local shows here and there. But uh, uh, Mag Seven, yeah, instrumental surf rock, surf punk, uh, spaghetti western. It's kind of all over the place. That. That's Donnie Blair's, uh, that's his baby. Yeah. Uh, he started that band in Dallas mm-hmm. when he was living there, and uh, they released two records with the original drummer and guitar player, yeah. uh, Scott, the Crime Donkey, Brayfield, and Dan Phillips. Um, and then Donnie moved here to Amarillo, and band kind of didn't have a lot going on and then we became friends right away and like a year later yeah. he found out I played guitar and he was like hey could you you be interested in playing some of this stuff and I was like sure and that's how it kind of happened so we uh, we've been best friends for 20 years and making records for the first record I, the first Mag 7 record I played on was released in 2006 oh wow um actually released on 6606. I remember that day. Um, I remember that that day. So, that was kind of on purpose. Sweet. Uh, But yeah, that's what... uh, What's on a lifetime date? Instrumental. Put an album out on the day, yeah. Surf rock, you know, in the vein of Huevos Rancheros and and bands like that, Los Straight Jackets. But then again, you know, we, we throw in some other stuff here and there, too. You know, Mag Seven has uh, what I find to be arguably it might be the greatest rock and roll instrumental ever recorded. It's a song called Del Scorcho. You're a fan of Del Scorcho. Del Scorcho is the greatest song ever recorded, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a meth fueled rage. Uh, every band needs to listen to it. In fact, that's what everyone needs to have. In their alarm clock, if they want to get up and move during the day, I can't listen to it much because uh, I get arrested. But uh, Del Scorcho is, yeah. So, were, uh, were you a part of the writing process of Del Scorcho? I'd like uh, to talk about Del Scorcho for about a half an hour. We can do that. Yeah, we okay. can, you know, if we played Del Scorcho, you could probably play it sixty times. That's sixty times. Yeah, half, half hour. hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Del Scorcho. This is a part. Where I'll probably like feed the audio in underneath, and hopefully I, I won't get uh, uh, sued for licensing. Or you got a cease and cease, cease and desist, probably. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll play it back. I'll start. I'll start writing it up. 
but the process so, seems to be finished. Yeah. Were you uh were you part of the writing process on that one? Yes. Yeah. Which and album was that one on? That is on the future is ours if you can count. Yes. Good title. The the song titles on uh, the Mag Seven albums are some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, shitload of dimes. Shitload of dimes. Tell us about that one because I know what this is from, but our audience here does not. Uh, we, Donnie and I, and now uh, our drummer Tyson Taylor, or Mongo. the Choctaw, or Mongo, Mongo yeah. or Texas Red, or Rojo Grande. Um, Man of many names. Formerly uh, drummer for the Revolt. Yes, uh, we we like to uh, we enjoy comedies. We enjoy movies, and we will take lines and references from movies, and we will use them in song titles. Since we don't have any words to our songs, it, it works out pretty well. So, uh, shitload of dimes is from Blazing Saddles. Um, you know, we 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 just find random things, and sometimes people catch it and sometimes they don't yeah but it makes us laugh and we actually have as much fun writing or coming up with the song titles as the music right so oh yeah absolutely yeah. del scorcho is a reference to del taco hot sauce when the germans bombed pearl harbor, pearl harbor yes yes a lot, a lot of uh, they use some history references mm -hmm. uh, in there when the germans bombed pearl harbor that was Dark day in American history. Mm. Incredibly dark. The Riddle of Steel. Again, that's a uh, that's a Conan reference. Yeah. Yeah. An animal house before that. So. Animal, yeah. Now, uh, Riddle of Steel. Hang on, no. See, is it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Can't remember the name of that one. Uh, that's Riddle of Steel. That's Riddle. Okay, that's what I thought. Now that is the only Mag Seven song with words in it. It is sort of yes. Yes, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I guess we're not a true instrumental band. We're not completely. Well, well, I mean, it sounds more like you guys are just kind of shouting in the room. We were. Yeah. 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 But I mean, there are actual, you know. And the super reverb has like a little bit of a super reverb. Yeah, that was uh, I believe Dan was yelling into his pickup. Yeah, at the end of that song. There. Well, I mean, so. there you have it. Yeah, uh, we party. You heard it here first. Hard. We've debunked the fact that they are a true instrumental band uh, because there is people talking somewhere on all of their recordings. Yes. In the vastness of it. How many albums do you guys have? Uh, Sixty-nine. Fucking hey, that's yeah, a lot of uh, That's yeah, like James Brown numbers. Yeah, we uh, we get around. We really do. Um, yeah, Mag Seven is six albums. Eighth round knockout. Use your powers for good, not evil. Future is ours if you can count. Knife to a gunfight. Um, climbing sessions. And black feathers. Okay. And the you mentioned Donnie Blair uh, is the bass player for this band. He is. Who the hell is Donnie Blair? Donovan Blair is. You know what? No one really knows. He sounds pretty shifty. I don't know about he's, that. He's uh, he's he's mysterious. Yeah. Um, he's. Uh, he has other stuff that he does. He does. He wrote a book and he does karate. Much like yourself, you you do the karate. I, I don't. You don't do the karate? I don't. I do kung fu. Kung fu. My bad. Uh, but the layman, you know, uh, Western terms, you yeah. know, it's all karate. Yeah, does. it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. if you grew up in the 70s, it's all karate. So is it kung fu or gung fu? It really depends on which area you're from. Okay. Uh, which area of China? or? It's 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 kind of a regional thing. Some... Okay. some Mandarin would probably be a little bit more focused on the K, mm -hmm. and Cantonese would be a little more relaxed, most likely, right. and it would be... Mm -hmm. yeah. what, uh, what area of China are you from? I'm not. You're not? Okay. I know, that's a shock. Yeah, that's a lot of people ask me that. Yeah. Uh, do you still do the classes on Saturdays? 
Uh, I haven't I haven't been doing classes on Saturdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm-hmm. Five thirty to seven. Where do you go do this at? Uh, Amarillo College Memorial Park. Oh, okay. Good. So uh, cold weather's coming. Are we gonna move those indoors somewhere? Or yeah. are we gonna do some cold weather, like some Rocky Balboa style, you know, mm. uh, cold weather white cream classes. We could certainly do that. I say we, I mean you. Yeah. I took those glasses for a little while to realize that this, uh, this doesn't move around that well like that. So it's a different thing. It is. It's a different thing yeah, for sure. Uh, it was a, like a psychological hurdle for me, but I needed it at the time. I felt it was very toxic and very weird at the time. It's a very, uh, it's unique in that way that it is mentally, emotionally sometimes taxing. It was. Um, yeah, and it's the stamp, maintaining the stance the entire time. Uh, I mean, my ass never looked better, but this is true. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was very. Your pants have never quite fit the same. No, no. Partly because of that, and partly because of uh, I just went on a fucking hard ass cheeseburger bender for about six months, and, and uh, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on down here, and then there's a, a lot more going on, you know, from the waist up. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. So, uh, COVID. COVID, yeah. COVID has uh, really put the kibosh on life as we know it. Uh, you know, there's been other pandemics in the past. Uh, in the 1920s, I believe, uh, what was it, the Spanish flu? I know the Spanish flu ruined lots of touring bands and podcasts back yeah, then as well. It, it shut uh, everything yeah. down. Uh, late 60s it was Hong Kong flu. There was no podcast at that time. But well, I mean, it was that. like three years with no Lollapalooza. Yeah, no. Oh, God. I know. Uh, yeah, they didn't. Uh, they couldn't. They couldn't. I mean, Burning Man, they, they, they yeah, I think they the, only canceled one Burning Man. The, the social distancing yeah. uh, clauses back in the 60s were a lot more stringent than they are now, where people couldn't be more than, uh, yeah, I think it was two miles. Uh, you couldn't be. Near the closest you could be near someone else was two miles, and so uh, not a whole lot was getting done as far as collaborative efforts. Yeah, it made gigs difficult. Yeah, uh, but you know we moved past all that. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, you know my mom had a car uh, when I was a kid that was big enough to where we could we could all social distance and you know by today's standards uh, very well in that entire car, and no one would be breathing the same air. Or, you know everyone had their own uh, environment. I miss that car. Doesn't really have anything to do with the conversation. I was just thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't say this was going to be a wildly intelligent podcast. Yeah, but, you know, just, you know, we do this for fun. Just here uh, to have a nice time. What was the last? Uh, what was the last show you played in Amarillo? Oh, I don't know. Don't well, see. It was, um, it was last what? Halloween? Would you guys play like last year? Uh, I don't, I want to say it was after the first of the year, but very early. Very early. Uh, Golden Light, was it the Golden Light? I believe so. Yeah. I believe Wade put us on at the Golden Light, and that was the last show. Fuck. You know, they should have played more shows in Amarillo this year than I have. That's unusual for me. I usually do a bunch of them. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I could be wrong. It might have been last year. It's just, yeah, it's, But hopefully next year will be a little bit better. Hopefully, um, bars. Of course, you know we, we're doing uh, some live stream things at uh, Left Woods, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a few places in town that are uh, having loud music. Marshall's Tavern, uh, Old Street Eats, uh, Drunken Oyster, Crush. There are places, uh, you know, for more like odd, you know family-friendly uh, type music. But at least, you know, there's still some sort of... The uh, opposite of what we see. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know if you, didn't Mag7 play a golf tournament one year? Uh, we didn't play the golf tournament. We played... Uh, there was a party the night before. Right. That we played. Gotcha. And it technically was the stripped-down, jazzier, mellow set. Oh, I see. Okay. We weren't chanting Bukaki at that one. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. But, uh, 
We just do that sometimes. Man, you know what I missed this year? I missed May Magic this year. May Magic is super fun. I'm sorry, it's not May Magic. Jesus Christ, they call that the they call that the first year. It's called Black Magic. It's Bad Magic. Bad Magic. In May. Right. In May. Bad Magic in May. First one was called May Magic. That's the one that Purdue was involved in. Uh, coincidentally, well, I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, after that, uh, Bad Magic. Mm-hmm. Thanks, I haven't played that one one time. Uh, I played that with you guys. You did. Yeah. There was other uh, bands. Uh, God, City Will Shake. There's been a lot of bands. Can't even think about Death Bells, Western Plaza. I'm not even going to get into the roster. In fact, I'm probably going to bleep all this out because I can't remember most of the band names that have played that. There's been a shitload of bands that have played that. That's a super fun deal, and hopefully we can do it next year. I'm really, really hoping we can. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of promoters in Europe are are announcing mm-hmm. festivals and things for the summer, um, even for this. I think some in spring. So. I appreciate their optimism, and yeah. hopefully we can, you know, we can make That's that cool. happen. So, we'll carry over to some other parts of the world here. And, you know, who knows? How do you guys? Uh, how does Vulture? I mean, do you guys get together to practice, or is it just for shows, just for little tours? I mean, how's it? No. Uh, usually, the way it works with everyone living in different places, mm-hmm. you know, we'll get together the day before, right? Run through everything. You know, if we have a little bit more time, we could do two days of practice. We would, but usually it's a day. Uh, Chad, Chad's in what, Colorado. Chad's in Indiana. Indiana. Uh, Sean and Joe were in California. Uh, Dave and uh, John are in Oklahoma City. Yeah. So that makes it convenient for them to get over here or for me to get over there. But right. Chad's it's still a little bit more of a hike for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll just get together the day before and. I think it was, jeez. Uh, I think we've even done one or two where we just flew in, did a quick, you know, an extended sound check and just called that right. good as well. So, if everybody rehearses at home, it's easy, you know. Has Vulture been overseas yet? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, we've done Canada, but we haven't been able yeah. to get, we haven't been able to get to Europe or, you know, the US, Japan, Australia, anything like that. But so you, uh, but you've you've done some some pretty crazy international touring with Zero, right? With authority, Russia, we went, Japan. You've been to Australia. Yeah, we did Russia a couple of times. It's been what was that like? It was wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. It was, uh, you know, what you. It's pretty much what you would expect. Um, the very first time we went over, it's a funny story. Um, Sean was Sellers that played with with me in Vulture. He was also an authority hero. Uh, so he and I played together. We actually met playing in that band because he joined that band after Jim, their original drummer, had quit. Right. Um, he had done a tour in Australia with Good Riddance. Flew from Australia to Phoenix. We did an in-store performance of the release of the Tipping Point album, which he also played on, and then the next day flew to St. Petersburg. Wow. So he, in the span of 48 hours, he went from Australia to the U.S. to St. Petersburg. Holy shit. So he was, he fucking time traveled. Like, he was out of his mind. (laughs) For like three days, he was just like, this is, and you know, we get there, um, there were some delays, we got off the plane, we got through customs, uh, met the promoter straight to the venue, straight to the stage. Didn't even have a chance to set up merch or anything. We went straight to the stage, played the show, straight off, dragged all of our bags like three and a half, four blocks to a train station, and took an overnight train from St. Petersburg to Moscow. That's the way the tour started. Yeah. And we were just like, what the hell? <laughs> of course, we're, you know, hanging out with promoters on the train and it's like they want to drink they want to hang out and party because they are Russians yeah uh, and so we did that all night so we didn't catch up on sleep until we got home like that one I think that tour was 
38 shows in a row, just short of 40, without a day off. Our day off was like an 11 hour drive. And then we played like three more shows, ended in England, had a day off, and then flew back home. So we did like 42 shows, uh, 38 in a row, without a day off. Damn. It was insane. That is a, that is a, that is a grind. Yeah, it was. How would the, uh, how did the uh, Russian audiences take to you? They were great. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Yeah, very cool people. Very, very friendly people. Very, um, it was everything else that was odd. Um, I remember we were driving, uh, and you see this, obviously, military plane. It just, we're talking 150 feet off the ground, jet. Yeah. Just, and just sonic boom, and you're like, what the fuck was that? Uh, we had a, we started a drive. We had a really, really long drive. Um, I think it was like an 11 hour drive for one, one show. And we're in this tiny little Euro style van, all the gear shoved in there and we're all like packed in. And, uh, the driver was, it's two lane road and he's passing in between cars so like semis are coming and he's just forcing them onto the shoulder because he's passing them because he's in a hurry and we're just like looking at each other like we are going to die on this trip um and yeah like thread the needle between yeah. them just forcing both lanes onto the shoulder so that he could pass the car <laughs> wild crazy did it deb uh have i turned you on to the winds of change podcast i don't believe so uh, I, I so Having played music in uh, in uh, in the Big Red, uh, a podcast called Winds of Change. It's amazing. It's it it's like a six or seven part series, and it tells the whole story about the song Scorpion song, Winds of Change, mm-hmm. and how the postulate is that the whole thing was engineered by the CIA. Like the CIA wrote and engineered the song, sent it to the Scorpions. And then they played it over there in the early '90s as kind of uh, I, I don't know, is it some sort of some sort of mission, some sort of ideology Just mission? Planting the seeds. Yeah, the planting the seeds of interesting of, of capitalism. Yeah, it, it, the whole thing is, is a trip. Uh, it yeah. sounds like a trip. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. Winds of change. That Very is, cool. it is wild. Yeah. But yeah, the, the Russian people were incredible. Yeah, they were very friendly. We went to Ukraine as well. Uh, awesome people just they were I mean they love fucking music they right. just you know they were into it oh well, like uh, Japan oh, Japan's the same way Japan yeah. is, is an incredible it's an incredible place to visit and play and the people there are so friendly and respectful and thoughtful and they just they're you you probably won't be better taken care of anywhere in the world no than in Japan. Uh, Very cool people. You said that uh, all the venues there, like all of them, were really nice. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Like like the sound system. And the Every audio engineer were, just knew his business. They and, were on it. Yeah. The gear, primo gear. Everywhere yeah. you went, like any, it's whatever you wanted. They were like, if they didn't have it, they had something incredibly close to it, and then were so apologetic about not being able to get you the exact thing you wanted, but it's like, are you kidding? Like, <laughs> it's, you know, the opposite of some of the, you know, places that we've had. You know, not saying that Europe is bad because they've got incredible stuff too, but right. there are there are situations where you, you know, oh yeah, backline will be provided, and then you show up and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. I gotta play for that. Yeah. It's not like a, it's not like a one six <laughs> spider. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, last year. Sean, he always told the story of one of the first times he went to Europe. He had to play a set. They didn't have a drum throne. Ten-speed bicycle seat. And he had to play a good ridden set sitting on that. Now, he said he, his ass was just ruined for a week. It was just on fire. Yeah. Kind of like he'd been in Thailand. Yeah. Huh? Awful. Yeah. Uh, one of the weird things that you told me in the past was um, using wireless frequencies. Like, if you used wireless, you had to, like, 
rent the the bandwidth, or you had to. They want to know. They almost want. They want to know in advance, basically. And there's certain things that they just can't be used. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, they might have relaxed on that, but the first time we went over, that was a thing where, you know, they would say, oh, you, you know, you need to make sure you stay away from these frequencies on these wireless. It's like, luckily, we didn't have to worry about that, but um, some guys do, and they just, I don't know if you can, you know, exclude certain ones that you like now out or whatever and it, it picks the right one but there's uh yeah Europe's a weird place I mean wow. it's a great place but uh yeah everybody's got different it's it's so like the things that they consider a big deal would not be a big deal here they're they're peculiar and particular about certain things and then other things you're like wow why can't we be more like that because they're just right. so relaxed about other things um, yeah, it's, it's, you just gain so much perspective when you travel and you go to these other places and you see, oh, you know, you get out of this, you know, we're just berated with so many different opinions. This is what the world is. This is what the world is. And then you go and you're like, no, it's not any of those fucking things. But like you spend extended periods of time in these places seeing, you know, Things like that, you know, like, oh, you have medical issues, whatever. Uh, Joe Raposo had a terrible accident, crushed his hand to the point that he, like, if it had happened in the U.S., he probably would never be playing bass again. Wow. Uh, but it happened, I can't remember what country it happened in, but they they either sent him to Switzerland or he was already there. But there was an incredible surgeon there that saved his hand. Huh. Didn't have to pay a dime because you're covered and it's like okay that that would have not only ended his career but it would have ruined him financially if it had right. happened in this country he couldn't have afforded so, it so are you saying that a uh, socialist tool that was out there actually sort of helped promote a capitalistic idea where someone can continue to uh, provide their art or their work and generate income that, that's what it sounds like you're saying to me <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I'm fiercely trying to avoid politics. Uh, some of you guys know me. I've got to shut the fuck up. I know I do, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, having said all that, that that that's uh, that's really cool. So, um, you know, you you've you've been all over the world. You, you know you. Played rock and roll, all over. you know. I mean, I've, I've played in some pretty interesting country bands, but not like you know when you're out there pushing your own music. Uh, it's kind of a dream. You know, that's, uh, a dream. that's you know, can't really even call it a job. And it's that's, it's one of those things you yeah. just never stop pursuing. It's For uh, what, my you, favorite thing in the world to do. Yeah. If you were to offer any advice to a uh, small time local artist or someone that's getting started, in it, what would you say is the most important thing to hang on to as far as someone that's wanting to create their own art and put it out there and make a living at it? Set goals, mm -hmm. not expectations. Okay. Uh, that's a big one because what's, what's shown to people or what people think it's like, it is not like. I mean, Authority did, did well on tours. Uh, right. Had a good fan base, great fan base all over the world. That were their their fans are some of the most loyal that you'll ever find. They're they're fucking awesome. Um, like I played in a band, left the band, and those you know I still get checked on. You know people. Hey, wow, really? Doing? Yeah, they're they're some of the best people out there. Um, but that you know even even in a band that does well, you you still have to be realistic about what. It's not a party all the time, you know. It, there's work that has to be put in. You know, you have to you have to take. You know, when you're out there, yeah, we have a good time. We always do. Um, sometimes we have not too much fun. Uh, but you 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 flip that switch when it's time, and it's 
then you have to be very, very focused and very business minded on what needs to be done and, and good decisions. You know, it's uh, the art's not going to take care of itself. You know, you have to put it in the right place. You have to take the right steps, and, and you know, you can't just throw it up there and say, oh, okay, here's this, and expect it to take off. You have to, you know, it, it becomes work, but you have to do, you have, you can't treat it like. If it becomes too much like a job, then you know it's going to suck the life out of it and fun out of it. But you do have to take it seriously, and you right. have to be, you know, be on time, be, you know, show up on time, you know, be prompt, you know, load in, load. Up. If you're not the, if you're not the headliner, fuck off the stage after you're done. Don't stand around high fiving each other and shit like that. Like, grab your shit. Don't break your shit down on stage. Get it off stage, and then break it down off stage to give the next band time. Take your art seriously, you know. Write, you know. Get together and write. You don't, you know. Don't just don't be married to the first thing that you hear. That's like, oh yeah, that's it. It's like work it, yeah. play it over and over, and and you're gonna find parts of it that you're like, this feels a little bit stale. Let's spice this up. Let's change this, you know. Um, and you have to be able to take, you know, you got to be able to take ego out of it, and, you know. Listen to ears that you trust. Listen to people that you trust, and and you know. What if you don't trust anybody? Well, I don't know. Fucking shit. You might be fucked. Just one more thing I wanted to uh, talk about: bunk puppets. Let's talk about it. Okay, that's the thing. So, uh, tell me your first bunk puppet experience. Oh Jesus! It wasn't even in a bunk. Yeah, it really? was just yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's kind of right of passage for a hotel you know, floor or something or uh, young men anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like you just yeah. Oh, here's a sock. Has, has there really has there really been fights over this sort of thing? Like who gets to the van first or? Oh no 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 like, not that, not yeah, that bad. Like okay. if you're I mean if you're in a van, usually you've got rows that are your row. Right right right. Uh, and that's kind of home, and it's like you don't you don't. You don't fuck with another man's row, mm. like to a degree. Like you know, if you're if you're, you know, we had a, we played a game in AZ where uh, we got some nesting dolls when we were in Russia. Oh yeah, right, right. Um, we lost all of them except for one, and that became Babushka. So the game was if you found Babushka in your belongings, it meant you had to you know you had to sh- shoot something, you had to drink something. Didn't matter what time of the day it was, or it could be nine in the morning. If you found Babushka, you'd be like, oh. And usually there was a beverage, right, with, you know, with it, so that you're like, oh. kind of like icing people, right. You know that that whole thing that happened for a while in the van too. That people would, you know, you just hide icing. It. Yeah, the what do you call it? The uh, the smearing off ice. Yeah, They're terrible. It was oh, like yeah, a zinc, yeah. oh. right? But what we because they were terrible. We would buy them, yeah, and hide them in people's row. So when you found it, you had to drink it. So yeah, so it might be under your pillow or something. And you're like, ah, what's going on? You pull your pillow up. You're like, ah, damn it, really? Oh, name brother, kind of like, kind of like this thing. Hi guys. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's just like you're, that. Yeah. You're, uh, you, you know, you're you're pulling pranks. You yeah. Because you you see the same four to five people every day, you know, for eight weeks, tight quarters, sharing rooms, sharing beds, you know, basically, you know, you're, you're, you're living in this, this small little bubble. So it's like you find these things to do to, you know, break up the monotony and, and keep things, you know, fun. What do you think the longest time frame you've gone without taking a shower was? definitely Russia yeah or I'm, I'm sorry that one of the Europe trips not necessarily Russia but I don't know a couple weeks a couple weeks yeah okay wow okay I mean you heard it folks yeah I mean it's sometimes you're rushed you know sometimes you have to pack light sometimes your bag doesn't arrive Mm-hmm. You know, you have all your gear, but you don't have a change of clothes, so you're wearing your giggies pretty much 
all the time. Um, you just have crazy sweat stains all over your clothes if you wear, you know, dark, dark yeah. colors and stuff. Yeah, and salt lines yeah, and stuff like that. A couple yeah. weeks. Okay, a couple weeks. Wow. I don't know that I've ever gone a couple weeks without taking a shower before. I have. Maybe that's... Uh, you, you don't, I mean, you don't smell good. Tor, yeah. tor, tor is a smell that you can't really, you can't really describe unless you been on it then everybody knows yeah. it's just a thick musty thing oh i, I know so yeah. like a like a junior high school gym locker room yeah i mean yeah. it's like i mean my first experience with that there's a band that uh, came through it was a punk band from the pacific northwest called spit boy and spit boy was an all like lesbian hardcore punk band and those gals, they, they hadn't showered in weeks. And I believe they had the opportunity to, they just didn't, because, I mean, it was it was gutter punk. And that was, uh, that was one of those shows where, like, I mean, they were fucking cool sounding, they had cool merch, and they sounded awesome, and they looked cool, but uh, yeah, something you got from the Spitboy show that you didn't get from other rock and roll shows was, like, a, like an olfactory... Uh, it was some sort of a tacit, like a flavoring uh, thing. Uh, it, once it was in your nose, it was in your mouth. And uh, uh, it was a great show. A great show. Uh, the show you can taste. Yeah. 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 It's like a scratch and sniff sticker. Yeah. Yeah. That's, if they could sell that at the merch table, like stickers that you can, oh, it smells like that band. Yeah. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. 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 Or, uh, Roadkill. I mean, it's one of those two things. I can't remember. Yeah. No tour. Tour kind of smells like you've crawled inside someone's underwear. <laughs> it's because uh, everyone's got a different. Their brand is different. You know, it's like some guys are. It's more pits. Some it's ass. Some it's their feet. Like everybody's different. But it, it, once you're in the band, it's it's just soup. And yeah. it's you know. I wonder if that's what Richard had in mind when he invented rock and roll. I don't think it is. Probably not. I imagine Rich, little Richard probably smelled amazing. Oh, sure. Yeah. That took care of himself. Yeah. Little Richard, man. Let's talk about this for a second. Sure. The thing about what rock and roll is to us now, even how it started back in the 50s, when white people were stealing black people's music and, you know, turning it into taking country and the blues and uh, turning the amps up too loud and making them distort. And there's guys like Little Richard play the piano. Gay black man in Georgia in the 50s. Holy shit. Yeah. Talk about big brass cojones. I mean, that, that, you know, and his music still holds ground, man. It still That's is amazing. amazing. He probably came out of the womb just like this. Yeah. Like, yeah, he came out of the womb finger first. Yeah. yeah. Fuck everybody. Because, yeah, he just, yeah. I'm going to do my thing. And he did. And it's fucking awesome. And it's, yeah, you're right. It still absolutely stands up. Yeah. I, I love the music game. I love being a part of it for what little part we were, we, you know, I can inject into it. And I love to have so many good musical friends. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a cultural telling of our lives, of what's on our mind. You know, music is, you know, they say the song of your people, uh, music, however it comes out, tells the story of that particular generation, and uh, it never ceases to uh, stop amazing me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's magical. It, yeah. it absolutely is. Uh, this has been uh, a pretty fucking fun show. I'm glad that we got yeah. this back off the ground. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We're about, uh, we're about an hour in, I guess. You know. Yeah. I'm going to... Uh, so... Uh, I'm going to put links to all of your music online in the comments. Okay. So you guys follow that stuff. Check out uh, Mag7, 30 and of course the infamous of Culture Wake. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, support local music as often as you can. And uh, Emerald Rocks is going to be coming back. We're going to have this guy back as soon as we can. Man, I'm flush. This gin.
He kicks yeah. in. Well, yeah. mine was mostly lime. Mostly lime. He got his, uh, he's uh, had an English drink. It's very limey. It's very limey. Yeah. So, yeah. it's all right, though. It's all right, though. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Old friend. Yeah, Appreciate man. it. Absolutely. Everyone rocks. We'll see you next week.